Workforce West Virginia's Region 7 Workforce Development Board has a job fair this Thursday from 11 until 3 at the Berkeley 2000 Rec Center at 273 Woodbury Avenue in Martinsburg. That's this Thursday from 11 to 3. My only question about this is for people who are looking for work, people who are seeking a job, a new job is what they're looking for. My question is, will I see former delegate Ken Reed there on Thursday looking for a new job? Ken, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing great, sir. How are you? <laughs> doing fantastic. It's a beautiful day outside. <laughs> yes, and it's nice and the air conditioning is working inside, which is uh, what we love here. That's what I heard. Yes, yeah. it does. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got some news for us, Ken. I do. I do have some news. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation out there. I've decided that uh, I'm going to be seeking the nomination, uh, the Republican nomination for the West Virginia Secretary of State office oh. here in this state for the 2024 primary election. Very nice. This, of course, is the Mac Warner position. He's running for governor, so he'll be vacating uh, that chair. And Ken, why Secretary of State? I think, uh, uh, I believe that uh, the Secretary of State's a, a, a great fit for my experience. I have, uh, I've been elected county commissioner, which does election uh, canvassing, uh, along with its executive duties, and uh, then I was elected uh, West Virginia State Delegate, uh, so I have a experience in the legislative field, and I have almost three decades of being a uh, CEO. So uh, it is an executive position, and uh, I feel that uh, I have a unique uh, uh, skill set to, uh, to be in that position. And. Ken, I'm going to go on a limb and say at Workforce's uh, job fair, the position of Secretary of State will not be there hiring, so I don't think <laughs> that, you should go. That won't. Uh, yeah, it's funny. The, the, the uh, governor's office asked me to uh, be on, the I think, the Workforce uh, board, mm -hmm. uh, and I actually had to turn him down because uh, I was planning on running for the Secretary of State's office. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good-sized job right there. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes, it is. You, you ran for Congress. Previously, I did. I ran for Congress in 2014. Uh, that was my first jaunt into uh, politics, and what a jaunt it was. Uh, I almost pulled it off. I came in second place uh, in a very crowded field. Um, I basically just outworked most of the other candidates except for one, and um, I, I learned a lot from that in the political uh, world out there. It, uh, it was quite eye-opening uh, how politics works and functions you served as a member of the house of delegates until, I, I did until recently when your district got drawn together with george miller's correct i was in the old 59th district uh that went, represented berkeley and morgan county and then uh, we redrew that district which i had a lot to do with it i basically gerrymandered myself out the uh, i was extremely worried about morgan county not having a delegate because of the growth going on in berkeley county so I, uh, I and the other delegates created a district that is uh, had, had a lot more of uh, Delegate Miller's voters in there than my voters. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I do it again uh, going forward. I I was really concerned about Morgan County and all the counties having a voice in the the uh, delegate uh, race. Billy, well, uh, Ken, congratulations on the announcement, and wish you the very best. Well, thank you, Bill. It's it's early, but uh, has anyone declared Secretary of State? Uh, there, uh, Delegate Pritt from down at Canal has, and uh, there's two other people that I'm not uh, I'm not I'm really sure who they are. Who have they've declared, or they are they the, the about two has declared, yeah. and yeah. Uh, so is Delegate Pritt. Okay, and how would you? This may sound like an obvious question, but it has subtleties to it. How would you run a statewide race? You're well known in the eastern panhandle. Obviously, I suspect you're not as well known in the southern part of the state. Uh, how would you run a statewide race? Uh, th that's a good, that's an excellent question. I'm actually from the northern panhandle. Uh, okay. I grew up in Brook County, and uh, I still have all my family up in that part mm -hmm. of the world. And then I went to uh, WVU, where I got a degree in pharmacy. Uh, and I was there for six years, and I still have a lot of connections in central West Virginia. Um, you're absolutely right about the southern part of the state. I have been uh, making inroads down there in Kanawha County and Jackson County. When I ran for Congress uh, at that particular time, that district ran all the way through Upshur, Kanawha, Jackson County, and those areas. So I've met a lot of people in those uh, areas that uh, I think will help me out. I do not know Delegate Pritt. Uh, He's the one you said is going to be running. Correct. Okay. Uh, will he be a formal candidate? 
or formal opposition? Uh, I think so. Anybody yeah. from Canal County yeah. would be. Which would help. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. is because it's a, the, the largest county yeah. in the state would be a formidable, yes. And besides being a delegate, what's his background? It, his background yeah. is, a, I think he's a, a lawyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. John. All right, I'll be the one to ask the stupid question. You know, until we had things called hanging chads in the 2000 election, I don't think I was aware that there was a state secretary of state that was in Florida. What does a secretary of state at the state level do? You're not doing international relations. Yeah, that, that actually is an excellent question. And uh, I was... You sound surprised that Ken, uh, Ken <laughs> that, that uh, John asked a really well, good question. Not, that not happens really. to be a lot. We, 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 we all are, Rob. <laughs> Ken's back. He's startled, in fact. Yeah, uh, not, not really, because I, I was actually, uh, yesterday I was uh, selling some of my wife's uh, stuff uh -huh. to make room for my important stuff. And, uh, was I, she the, aware? Uh, yeah, no, she, as a matter of fact, she wasn't there. <laughs> no, she'll find out. And, and I was talking to the uh, lady who uh, was buying the stuff, and she was... The, the, Apparently, they used to live up in Berkeley Springs and was what ran the EMS. And then they connected me with the pharmacies and the commissioner and stuff like that. And they asked me if I was going to run for any other office. And I told them Secretary of State. And that's the exact question that they asked was, what does a Secretary of State actually do? Mm -hmm. And it surprised me how many people may not actually know what that uh, office does. It's, it's basically the chief election officer of the state. That is the primary job, but it is broken up into seven other divisions. It's the smallest uh, office in the group of offices, which include the governor and AG's office. Um, but it uh, the the meat of it, it has to do with the business part of it. There's a business division which registers businesses and charities and notaries and and, and stuff like that. That's the the meat of it, which I fit in extremely well with that part because I've been in business for 30 years. I deal with uh, a lot of paperwork from the Secretary of State office and um, it's ironic that back when I was in the legislature I actually wrote a bill to adjust uh, something from the Secretary of State's office um, that I thought was needed and I, th I think this is where I come into play is I can do a lot of small things that make a big difference in how it affects with uh, businesses. It was House Bill 4266. And basically what it is is every year um, I would get a letter in the mail from a group that basically was trying to trick me into paying for their services that the Secretary of State's offices offered online for $25. It's an annual, um, uh, an annual, uh, uh, sign up sheet for your businesses so this this company basically wants to charge 150 200 bucks yeah. to do those services for you and it the, the form comes in a very official looking when you look at it you're like well this came from secretary of state's office but if you look in a tiny tiny print it does not come from the secretary of state's so i wrote a bill uh back in 2022 that basically says that anybody who is working off of the needed codes that Secretary of State has and these businesses have to comply with, they have to put in a pink sheet, 8 by 11, that basically has the West Virginia Secretary of State's address, email address on, and that states that they will do this for $25. Just so it's out there, you know. And uh, the uh, that bill went... It did well. It blew through uh, government organization, but then it started. It, it, it was so well, it started getting Christmas treed, um, where it, people were adding on misdemeanors and thousand dollar fines, and that that was not my intent. So I had I went to to um, uh, Doug at Hanshaw, who was the uh, leader of the Republican Party in the House, and asked him to put it into judiciary, which I was moved into. Uh, so I can clean that back up. I, I don't want to make laws that just mm -hmm. was just too crazy. So I wanted to pull that back out, those $1,000 fines and stuff like that, and make it more reasonable. Um, 
but then time ran out and it kind of just died there in judiciary. Uh, more Capito did not uh, pick it up at the end of, of the session. And I figured I would just pick it up later. So this is a good way for me to pick that back up and uh, do small things that just continue uh, the, what the what Mac Warner has been doing for this uh, Secretary of State's office all along, which has been a, a great job. Do you, it's again very early, but any rumors that Natalie Tennant will jump in the ring again? On the Democratic side? Th that I don't know. Yeah, I don't I'm not know. heard that. I, th th I just had to get my wife's permission. That's yeah. all I had. To, uh, <laughs> that, that's, about, that's been my biggest obstacle so far. <laughs> well, you got to quit asking about his opponents. He's not here to publicize his opponents. Yeah, I, I just... <laughs> yeah, but, but Natalie uh, has long felt that was her job, So it's um, and she held it for a couple of so times. So, yeah. What are the partisan elements of Secretary of State? Uh, there really shouldn't be any partisan elements of the Secretary of State. You, you, you have a job. It's an executive position. And I, I look at it like I do the pharmacies. I treat everybody professionally when they come in, and I treat you the same. It doesn't matter what, uh, what uh, your issues are or what your problems are. I'm going to treat you professionally, and I'll do that the same as Secretary of State's office, whether you're a Democrat, Independent, uh, or Republican. Ken Reed, our guest here on the program. If you're just tuning in, Ken has officially declared himself as a candidate for the Secretary of State's office. And if th this is your first public de declaration via the media? That's correct. This? Ken, we thank you for doing it on our program here. You're welcome. Uh, I very, wanted to announce an Eastern Panhandle first and yeah. then uh, work my way through the rest of the state. That's very kind of you to select our program. We are all appreciative of that. Ken, did you consider any other... Uh, races or positions before you settled on Secretary of State? And when I say settle, I don't mean that in any... Yeah, no, I understand what you mean. I, I tell you what, I briefly considered the the uh, run for Congress again. Um, that district would be tailor-made for me, actually, because of the, my ties in Northern Panhandle and Central West Virginia. That got uh, redistricted also, and it took out Canal and the southern part of the state. Uh, and uh, But my I just don't think that's for me at this point in time. I, at the, I like accomplishing things. And uh, th there's an old saying that you go to Congress, that's where good ideas go to die. And uh, at this point in my life, I'm 55, I, I want to get some stuff done and achieve goals. Uh, maybe sometime in the future I can look at a federal thing, but, but not right now. You mentioned that Mac has done a good job, and I think he has done a good job. Uh, if you were elected, is there any part of the Secretary of State's job that you would that you would address that needs to be improved upon? Uh, I would like to look at the, the, the business part of it. Like I said, I, I've already it, – and it's a bunch of small things. Everybody thinks that this is a small office. You think you can go in there and do these mass changes. You can't. Uh, you would have to go through the legislator and, legislature and, and get those stuff approved. But I think you can do a lot of small things that improve on the efficiencies of that office. You know, there, there's a, like when you go in and you do your annual reports, if you have multiple LLCs, you have to, you have to pay your $25 each time and there, I, I always thought there should be a way to group those into a just one payment and be done with it um, stuff like that it's small pieces that just make it more business friendly uh, going forward and same thing for election uh, processes we'll just continue what Mac did uh, keeping the voter rolls cleaned up um, when I, I dealt with a bunch of the clerks when I was county commissioner and uh, the, the the clerk's offices in the counties do a wonderful job at the election process. And in the state of West Virginia, I think we do do a great job uh, on the election process. So I don't think there's a ton of stuff you can do there. We might be able to tweak something here and there. But going, the back, part, going back to a question I asked earlier, uh, elections are frequently – a popularity contest, but we like to believe that they're the uh, it's determined on substance on platforms. How would you separate yourself from the other folks in the state running the Secretary of State's office? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, you're correct on a lot of that stuff because uh, a lot of people don't even know who who you are when you announce for politics, like the guy I was selling my wife's stuff to uh, they, they don't even know what secretary of state does so you have to go out there and you have to educate them in uh, uh, one process of what they actually do but what separates me is basically my experience I, I, I don't think my 
my resume is second to none in this race so far with uh, my county commissioner experience the delegate experience my chief executive uh, officer experience from three decades of running multiple different businesses in real estate and health care and even the, the uh, restaurant business um, I've, I've dived into all kinds of different things i have uh, close to 100 employees now so I'm, I'm, i've dealt with uh, that part of the business i, I think it, nobody will outwork me i'll outwork it just about anybody so with all of this experience the the um, the private sector experience and the elected office and, and public service, you singled out very early on, I, I wrote the note here, it was when you ran for Congress, that was an eye-opening experience. And you said that actually with wider eyes. What, was, what were the eye-opening elements of that run? Now, the, the, the run for Congress, that, that was my first jaunt into politics. And uh, should I have gone for a smaller office? Probably. Uh, looking back at it, I think n not knowing how the processes work, um, I think if I would have gotten elected, I very well could have been chewed up and spit out at the federal level. Uh, looking back, to be honest with you, uh, I was just extremely naive with uh, how the, the system works within. It, it, politics is a team sport. And at that time, I, I had no team. It was just me, my wife, and uh, uh, one other person who was running that thing. And I just ran everywhere. I mean, I, I was, that, that, that district was absolutely brutal. I mean, I had to drive to Jackson County. And then I still was working the whole time while I was doing that. So I'd get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, drive to Jackson County, meet up with the people I was supposed to meet up with there, give my little spiel, and then drive back and then work the next day. Uh, it, was, it was just absolutely brutal. But running for Secretary of State is going to be even more brutal using that as an example because you've got to uh, uh, incorporate the southern part of the state. Correct. Uh, the, uh, my, my plan going forward is basically to uh, – I'm 55. I've been in health care for 30 years. And my kids now – and back then, my kids were still small. And uh, so there was a balancing act going on with – because you, don't, you never get that back with, with your kids. So there was a balancing act going on. But my kids are all grown now, and there are, uh, two of them are still in college. Um, and I'm now – the goal is to move over some of my duties now to them. And I've just now you mean started in talking, the business in the in businesses, business. yeah. yeah okay. So I can lighten that load uh, over the next year yeah. or so, and that, that's going to help tremendously uh, with going that. And that, and in fact, I'm a pilot, and I can fly down to yeah. Canal County in an hour and a half. Yep. Driving from Eastern Panama is tough yep. to get to the rest of the state. You're about as far as you can possibly be. When we drove down to the House of Delegates, it's a five-hour drive, so uh, I, that definitely helps me out. Uh, with just my experience of you know, being a pilot. You must enjoy the process. You must enjoy, even though everybody says running for office is a horrible thing, and it's a very difficult thing, but you must enjoy the process or you would not continue to do it. Does your wife share with you the... Uh, uh, the enthusiasm <laughs> for running for office. Oh, he was selling her stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. <laughs> more ain't no enthusiasm enough now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I was making, I was making <laughs> space for you know my important stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. of course, because <laughs> I, I, I have that. But uh, uh, yes and no. Politics is a love hate. Yeah. Uh, it, it's if you've been in politics, you have. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it can be brutal. I mean, there's just tons of hate just floating out there, and you just kind of you have thick skins. But my the, wife doesn't care for it. Yeah. Actually, quite honestly. Uh, she probably wishes I would not do it, but she knows I kind of enjoy a little bit of that process. And I, I only have so much left in me, and because uh, I, I don't, I definitely don't want to do this forever. But uh, I, I absolutely love the state, and uh, I think I can help the state keep going in the right direction. And it has been going in the right direction for the past uh, years as the Republicans took control and moved more business friendly. Uh, attitudes for the state and, and I think everybody can admit to that, that that we have done very well as a state and I've been a part of that along mm -hmm. the way yeah, uh, going back to the uh, your your wife's support, uh, a lot of stones are thrown when you both run and as you're elected. I found two two populations were catching the stones that reacted less positive than I did. One is your wife. The other was little ladies at church. And I'd go in on Sunday morning. They said, "Oh, horrible things are said about you." And uh, you you as a candidate, uh, you as a office holder, kind of realize it's part of the game, but. 
other folks don't see it that way. They take it much more personal than what you do. It is extremely personal. Yeah. Uh, when I work the bench at the pharmacies, I, I'm uh, extremely available, and everybody knows it. And they'll come up and they'll come up to the little counseling area, and they'll just ask me all kinds of stuff about politics and stuff yeah. like that. And they yeah. do take it very personally. There's a there's a fellow that has a little house on Route 9, and he has a little bank. And on this bank, he is very particular of his signs, his political signs. And when somebody puts a political sign on his bank without his uh, permission, he just goes ape. And uh, that that is the mentality of a lot of people. They, they take personal... Uh, pride in what they believe how the state should go through uh you know move forward and yes you're absolutely correct and a lot of times there's one or two issues it, it's when you're in politics you have to deal with a multitude of issues but for particular individuals it's just one or maybe two not realizing you're juggling you know three or four things on the back end that are important for the state to keep continuing uh you know running Ken Reed is our guest. He has just declared for Secretary of State in West Virginia in the upcoming Republican primary. Ken, when you ran for Congress, when you ran for House of Delegates, when you ran for County Commission, there are specific issues of policy and politics that you can campaign on, you can make a case for. Secretary of State's a bit of a different animal, especially with Mac Warner having taken over for Natalie Tennant and changing some of the ways the SOS office does business. And you mentioned that most of those ways you've agreed with on Mac. So what will be your biggest issues as you walk the state and talk about why you should be the next secretary of state? Uh, well, the, the biggest thing is to, to make sure that the elections are still free and fair. You know, the, uh, that, that is the primary job of the Secretary of State's office and working with the county clerk's offices and making sure everything runs smooth. They were pushing uh, the new voting machines, uh, Mac's office, uh, all the counties. If you guys remember mm -hmm. last, last election, Morton County had an issue with uh, one of their voting machines because we still had one of the older systems uh, that were out there. And since then, they have fixed that process and I'll continue that to try to update and modernize uh, the make sure all the counties get uh, good systems in place that uh, all talk to each other and, and and go forward with that round but like I said the, the Secretary of State's office is very it's very uh, limited it's very mm -hmm. pointed uh, and you're, you're right with uh, when the legislative side you can you can do this and say this and I want to get this done but with an executive position your job is basically just make sure that what the law is is what the law is and you make sure that uh, you comply with it and uh, make sure it's run smoothly and efficiently and I am very good at those things. Natalie Tennant when she was Secretary of State was making a push for more uh, access remote voting absentee ballots. Mac not so much during the pandemic when we needed to have that we did and then as soon as that receded he wanted people back in the polls in person voting where will you be with that i'm on the back side with that the uh, i'm we are very generous in west virginia you have 10 days of uh voting before uh election day you can go in and vote anytime you want uh the ballots were sent out for military and those uh people and i think that's or for people who who have other issues in the hospital or can't get out and will continue with that uh but i want to i think there's a balance there and just mailing them out to everybody is a, a no-go for me i think you should be able to do your research you have ample time uh if you deserve a mail-in ballot you can you can request one and if it follows the law then you'll get one and then you can have uh, you can vote up to 10 days Prior, there's no reason why you can't do that, and I, I think that's the way to go. Just about out of time. Final thought from you. Uh, no, I appreciate you having me on the air, and uh, I, I have a, uh, I started working on my website. It's uh, West Virginia or Ken Reed for West Virginia, and uh, it, it does take a team, and it takes uh, all kinds of money to run a statewide race. And if you were interested in uh, getting on Team uh, Ken, uh, I'd recommend you go to that website and hit the donate button and put some money. I know Bill's already yeah, got just, his phone out. He was just, talking yeah. directly. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> just, just when you hit it, the donate button, just keep hitting. Yeah, just keep <laughs> <laughs> that button, it, that, that's the other part about running for politics. It's tough. It's like it. Yeah. It everybody. What, it, 
I, the weird thing is everybody wants you to fix their problems with other people's money. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's hard to do that when you can't get elected because it takes so much money to get elected. Yeah. Uh, now, for the governor's office, uh, Senate office, uh, House of uh, uh, House Representative, there is a pool of donors that are anxious to get in line and make a contribution. I suspect less so with Secretary of State. So, how do you go out and solicit money? It is. Uh, you get on the radio and you ask Bill Stubblefield to uh, to uh, donate. And start you, the momentum. You start the momentum. That's pretty much Bill, what you do. That's all you. Come on, Bill. Do. You can start a movement. <laughs> yeah. It's all on you now. Yeah, look for that big red donate. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, put Billy down for 100000 right now. I feel confident, and he, he'll back that up. That's what him. I like to hear. <laughs> all right. Hey, uh, Ken, good to see you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you good so much for coming hey, in. Nice day. Best of luck. Former Delegate Ken Reed, now candidate for Secretary of State, making that announcement here live on this program. We appreciate that, of course.